Well, welcome into Tech Sacks Rewind presented by Yeti. Uh, all the talk today, Billy, was about that young man right there. Well, he's there and he's there. He's everywhere. <laughs> Is it a commercial? It's a commercial. Yeah, it was. What a weekend for Sam Bennett at the Masters. Uh, really captured the hearts and minds of everyone in the country. Aggies and, and anyone else that's not just a golf fan, but a sports fan and just a fan of that story yeah. and what we, it was like you said, it was almost like a storybook weekend for him. Just in, incredible to watch, really fun and uh, couldn't be happier for him. Yep. And a great reception last night at the airport. You know, I think he walked in and he was shocked by how many people were there. So just cool deal. Yeah, great. I deal. think every Aggie like today would be like, <clears throat> you know, hey, thank you. Thanks well, for that weekend. Make sure you check out his Instagram account because you can get details. Eventually, they'll have more to offer of yeah. Sam's bobbleheads. So at so. Sam Bennett Golf, and there's a link on the site to the bobbleheads. I think it'd make a great present, you know, for any Aggie. And right now <clears throat> is a time, I think, you know, where he can really, not just him, but also uh, uh, proceed to those charities, go to all, Alzheimer's research and and support, so... Obviously, a cause near and dear to his heart. So go support him. Go get your bobbleheads. Uh, I think it's a great one, by the way. Yep. And uh, we talked about Sam, obviously, a lot of the show. We talked about Aggie baseball, the series win over Auburn. And uh, Bronny talked a little bit about the Ags potentially changing their lineup. Schloss was on the show. He kind of gave us a little hint to that, that and more here on Tex Ags Rewind. Um, what was it, 30 holes that he uh, had to play in day two? Or, day, excuse me, the last day? I think it was 30 I, I holes. Don't, I think I it was 30 recall. holes. Regardless, uh, what a journey. It was great to see him in the middle of all the action, all the accolades he was getting. It was great to see Brian Corton out there as well. They showed up late last night. Tex Ags was there for it. I think Billy was there for it as well. Uh, just awesome to see Sam celebrated. The guy that we all figured that this was in, like, I don't know if I would have predicted a top 20 finish. Let me rephrase that. We all... I think people who have gotten to know him, see him here, expect huge things for them, for him. And I hope and I feel that this is just the beginning of uh, a lot of Sundays we're going to be tuning in seeing greatness from Sam Bennett. Yeah. Um, when do you think he goes pro? As soon as the season's over? Yes, me too. Yeah. Come play for A&M. Get finished. Go pro. But they started a tournament today, I believe, that he said he was going to be in. Um, so he said, yeah, I think I'll do it. It's, uh, let, let's hear from Sam yesterday, his opening statement yesterday, because uh, a lot of emotions coming off the 18. By the way, I love the, uh, the cheers that he was getting go, the, approaching his last, uh, his last putts there on, on 18. Here's Sam Bennett yesterday. Yeah, it was good. I'm going to need some, you know, some time when I get back to decompress and really you know, look back and enjoy it. But, um, you know, I haven't, had, I haven't had kids yet, so that, that walk-up 18 was definitely the coolest experience of my life. Um, you know, and the walk up 12, but, uh, you know, I didn't play how I wanted to this weekend, but, um, you know, this this experience playing the weekend at Augusta um, is definitely going to help me, you know, be the golfer I want to be. And to be able to play these the Sunday pins was just incredible. Better than the video game. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've showed that all year. Uh, I think we have to show it because most of our uh, things we have to overcome uh, are self-induced. And that's, uh, you know, I, we've won our last two SEC series, um, which is obviously, if we can continue to do that, the season's going to turn out just fine. Uh, it's just a manner and manner in which you win, manner in which you lose. Uh, it's not just us. I, I see it across college baseball, especially in the SEC. But, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, would have been real easy. I mean, uh, how we lost that middle game. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't get all into like the call at home plate and all that stuff because when you leave runners on base or you, you know, there every single pitch has impact on the game. Every single play has impact on the game, and and to get upset or to say, well, hey, coach, did you see the replay of the video? This, all that stuff. I mean, that's lose. That's a losing mentality. That's a losing mentality. Our job is to do better on all the other pitches. So we're not in that situation. Um, but I think the takeaway, I mean, yeah, we, I mean, we, we have a lot of toughness to us. Brett, Brett Minnick being back in the lineup, um, 
has made us better. Um, we just uh, Brandon Garcia has taken. You know, I think if we can continue to pick the right spots for him, um, that's great. Um, you know, we won two ball games without Ashenbeck having to pitch in uh, more than one time. I think that's good. Um, but we have a, uh, you know, we got to move on and um, we got to continue to develop this pitching staff somehow. Uh, and this week is is going to be even tougher, to be honest with you. Uh, UTSA um, has a really really good team. Uh, they they played a doubleheader on Thursday, and then their third game got rained out. So I'm sure you know they have a lot of options. Oh well, of course, when Minicay makes been completely different. Right, game. the whole and the whole thing feels different. It was really interesting to hear Slosh say he may think about shuffling some of the stuff in the lineup. Trevor Warner hit leadoff all year last year when they made their run. Remember, they got toward the end of the year. And, well, I said he hit leadoff all year. When they started to figure out who they were last year offensively, mm-hmm. he went to the top of the order. Yes. And he's not a traditional leadoff hitter, but last year's team didn't have one of those. This year, you kind of do with Hunter Haas. Hunter Haas could hit really anywhere in the order and be productive. So I think that's probably what he's toying with is maybe putting Trevor back, back to, to the, the top. Leadoff. Yeah bumping everybody else down, maybe putting Austin Boast in the two hole and then hitting uh, Haas and Moss behind them. But, you know, it, it does get you away from being right, left, right, left like they are right now with when right now they're going what Hunter, Jack, Austin, Brett, and then Werner. So that's through five hitters. That's right, left, right, left, right. Uh, and, and then they were had, you had Targots down there that can, can go from either side. And, and listen, I wrote, I wrote a lot about Brett Minnick in my article that's coming out today. A lot of it, the credit I'm giving to him, just it, it makes everybody feels like everybody's more comfortable now that Brett's back. This is the lineup that we thought we were going to see day in, day out when the season started. So maybe that has something to do with it. But we're also seeing Ryan Targotch drive in runs. And that's what he got so good at last year. He led mm-hmm. the SEC in RBIs. So it's not always about Targo getting hits. It's about Targo driving in runs that makes him so valuable, and he's starting to drive in runs, a, a bunch of runs in the last two weekends. I was looking at what Trevor and Targo did this weekend. Combined, they went 11 for 25. Um, they're, start, they're starting to – Well, you're going to win games when they do that because they're going to drive in runs, they're going to have extra base hits amongst those. So they both hit homers, and Trevor had a huge three-run homer mm-hmm. in game one. And you hit, I guess – said you've only seen that kind of level of fame since well johnny was the only time because and but look at what some of the AM athletes have done there was a little level of that I, I would say with uh with vaughn when they won the super bowl in denver yeah. and the build up to that and and he won mvp of the freaking super bowl and uh just vaughn was such a personality such a character and still is but just the 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 Build up and kind of peak of of Von Miller, and and his fame as an NFL, one of the best players in the NFL, um, and just kind of the way he kind of crossed over. There was that, I would say, might be number three. You know, a thing Mo what she did in track, but the mm-hmm. Olympics, it's just it's a little different because she won two gold medals. But unless it's like a Michael Phelps kind of thing. Or Usain Bolt when they win like five, six, seven, whatever the record. I don't know if either one of them won seven, but you know, four, five, six medals. That's when those those are the ones that you'd have to almost get to that level of in you know to me in the Olympics to capture the kind of attention he did. Mm-hmm. The Masters, it's you know there are the golf majors, then there's the Masters, there's the Super Bowl, there's March Madness, there's the Master, you know, like, it's a very short list if you were to ask anyone, like, that the biggest kept, sporting yeah. events in the world. That everybody is yeah, tuning in on. And March Madness is just the country, but yeah, you could say the world, and you go, the World Cup, the Super Bowl, the, you know, it, the Masters is up there. And in America, it's probably the Masters and the Super Bowl, and then you might say, like, well, you know, could you be a World Series hero or something, but... Just the amount of messages, just from posting a video of him coming into the yeah. airport last night, the amount of messages I'm getting from people, friends of mine that have zero to do with A&M that I didn't even know gave two rips about golf, 
So I think I've gotten to a point that we don't need to do a close anymore. People know what to do. They, they know to like, comment, and subscribe. Do you think we should give it a, a little three-week stretch of just end? If you want, I'm down. I think you want just, is it like an on on air meeting? Yeah, let's do it. Let's just just at the end, last interview, fade the black over. So at the end of the first one, not at the end of this one. At, well, yeah, to, starting. You mean tomorrow, you're going to get rid of the rewind? Period. No, no, no. Rewind. Just staying. this part. Just this part that nobody really I stays agree. to watch for. I agree. They know to like and comment. They're on YouTube. They know yeah. what to do. Yeah. People, people in 2023 know what to do when they like something on on YouTube. Or Sometimes they need the reminder though. This is it. This is your reminder. But no more after today. Maybe in the intro, I'll give you the reminder. See you next time.